Hi, welcome everyone to our annual tax planning video. Uh, these years roll around very quick. This year it's 2017 and uh, much like a, a child at, at Christmas, I know you've been anticipating what Santa's going to bring this year for your tax planning opportunities. Unfortunately, you're that kid who's been expecting a brand new bike. Um, however, you're going to get a cookbook about how to cook sugar-free. Um, not very exciting, I'm sorry. So here we are, we've got some ideas though, uh, many of them standard, uh, as they are from year to year, um, but perhaps a couple of, of new ones this year. Uh, the good news, if you are retaining your status as a small business, uh, there are some concessions available to you. Previously, that uh, small business threshold to qualify was a, a business with a turnover up to two million. Uh, pleasingly, that's now increased to uh, 10 million uh, as was proposed last year and again reinforced by the government this year in the budget. So what does that mean for you as a small business? Well you get your annual um, asset write-off for, for assets that you purchase up to $20,000. So if uh, you're looking to upgrade your computers, your, your vehicle, uh, manufacturing equipment, those sorts of things and you qualify as a small business Anything with a value up to $20,000 qualifies for an immediate write-off. So if you haven't already done so, it might be wise to look at purchasing them before 30 June. If you've got a, a company structure uh, for the 2016 year, if you were a small business, your tax rate was 28.5%. For this 2017 year, uh, that rate has dropped to 27.5% for, for small businesses. So again, those with a turnover up to 10 million will qualify there. Um, if you've got a trust structure, so not a corporate uh, trading structure, uh, you may still be able to take advantage of that 27.5% rate uh, if your trust distributes to a corporate beneficiary. Now the qualifying criteria there is that the corporate beneficiary meets the small business test. If you're unsure about that, you should speak with your advisor. Now, superannuation is one that pops up every year, and, and rightly so. Um, now, if you're an employer and you're paying superannuation um, guarantee obligations on behalf of your employees, uh, your obligation for the for the June 17 quarter is that you must pay that by the 28th of July. Um, however, in order to get a tax deduction in this financial year, superannuation needs to be physically paid to those super funds, uh, receipted effectively by the super funds on or before 30 June. Now for those of you that make individual contributions, um, your limits for this financial year are $30,000 uh, for those of you that are up to the age of 49 um, and 35000 for those of you who are uh, over the age of 49 um, as of June last year. Now. What's the significance there? Well, as of 1 July this year, that rate or dollar threshold drops to $25,000 for everyone. So if you are able to take advantage of maximising your contributions, and that forms part of your overall in investment strategy, um, you need to do that by 30 June this year. Uh, an often understated tax planning tip is actually to defer a tax liability and often that's the best for some taxpayers um, that they're going to get as far as the tax planning goes. Um, so how do you defer a liability? Well you can look at uh, say deferring uh, your assessable income so if there's income that you can defer into the new financial year you're pushing the tax liability for that income into the following financial year as well. Uh, similarly with uh, bringing forward deductions uh, if you've got the ability to do that. So for small businesses um, you can actually make certain prepayments uh, for some expenses which allow you to claim a full deduction this financial year. Now one area of, of tax compliance I guess that we haven't spoke of in, in previous videos but one that I've had reason to, to comment on a few times recently is in respect of motor vehicle expenses. Um, Historically, there was four methods from which you could claim your motor vehicle costs. Um, as of, of now, there's only two methods. And one's the logbook method, which essentially is you determining what business percentage you use your vehicle for and claiming that percentage across your expenses for the year. 
Um, but the question's been asked recently is what, what's actually got to be in the logbook and how often do you need to do one? Uh, well, put simply, your logbook needs to be kept for a continuous period of 12 weeks. If you haven't done that this financial year, that's okay. You can start now um, and have that 12-week period cross over 30 June but still use that percentage for this financial year. Um, from there, that logbook will last you five years, so there's no requirement to keep another logbook for the next five years um, unless your business use drops materially, uh, then it would be expected you, you, you keep a new logbook. Uh, if you own an investment property and you're looking to claim uh, depreciation and other capital allowances associated with that, uh, you will need a compliant uh, depreciation report prepared by a quantity surveyor. Um, you don't need to have obtained that as of now, and you can have that prepared for you at any stage up until lodgement of your tax return for this 2017 year. Uh, now that'll be for people that have bought a property, say this year, uh, prior to budget night, because there has been some recent changes around depreciation. Um, we would recommend you go and engage a quantity surveyor to prepare that report for you and typically we find that the, the cost of doing that report, which is tax deductible, um, is far outweighed by the, the, the tax benefit you'll get from that. So now just a few um, compliance areas with respect to, to businesses um, and certain things you should look at doing prior to the end of the financial year. Um, if you're a company and then you've got some shareholder loans out there which you often referred to as Division 7A loans, you need to be talking to your advisor to make sure that the compliance is in order, minimum repayments are being met, uh, so as not to present yourself with any adverse tax impacts come 30 June. A couple of other typical things to do as well, uh, your stock take, uh, for those of you that that buy and sell goods, uh, have a look at doing your stock take prior to 30 June or on or around 30 June, um, but also getting rid of any obsolete or old stock that's just not um, selling, write that off, claim the deduction this financial year for that. Uh, similarly with your bad debts, it's now time to have a look at those um, uh, non-payers, um, document that within your financial records and actually write that debt off out of your accounting system in order to claim a deduction for that uh, bad debt this financial year. Um, that is a focus area of the ATO looking at actually whether or not that debt was physically written off in the year in which you are looking to claim it. Uh, for those that are using uh, trust structures for either business or investment, um, again there's an ongoing requirement each year that the trustees exercise their uh, discretion uh, or obligations in respect to the allocation of, of income of the trust. Make sure those re resolutions are prepared uh, on or before 30 June each year. Um, don't just assume that's the date you use. You, best to, you need to be mindful of what's actually in your trust deed. So if you haven't read your trust deed, make sure you do that also. Um, but just get those resolutions on file uh, as at 30 June. And probably our last point for, for this year's uh, tax planning tips is centred around capital gains tax. Again, it's one that pops up every year. Um, it's relevant and, and if you don't understand the rules fully, it can be costly. Um, and I'm talking about for assets that you have sold uh, with respect to capital gains tax, your gain is realised on the date that you sign the contract uh, for the sale of that asset, so in particular with respect to real estate, it's the actual date you sign the contract, not when settlement occurs. So if you are looking at disposing of any assets uh, that are potentially going to realise a capital gain for you, uh, you may seek to push that through um, beyond 30 June so that the gains crystallise in the, the following financial year. Um, similarly, that date becomes relevant for assets that you own for around that 12 month mark. Um, any assets owned for more than 12 months may qualify for the 50% discount. Uh, so again, if you're looking at selling, be mindful of when you purchase that asset so that you can take advantage of the 12 month rule. 
So there you have it. That's our 2017 uh, tax planning tips. Um, not a lot different from the 2016 year because uh, there has not really been any significant tax changes to take advantage of. Um, as we've said before, these are just some generic strategies. They're not for everybody. Uh, they won't apply for everybody. Uh, but if you do have any questions at all, our advice is to always ask your qualified advisor.